his games? It's been banned most of the it's games. It's been banned. One game, HR picked it up every single oh, other yeah. game. It's been played on the offlane by them, on the position 5 I've... by Miposhka as well. They've done extremely well with that uh, voice spirit. But this Ancient Apparition still boggles me. I think the hero is really strong overall. Doesn't strike me like Nigma would snatch it that easily and play, you know. They, they, they like the spice on that 5. They don't like the AA. This is true. But yeah. Hellraisers, they're not going to give many chances. They still get rid of the IO and the AA, as you mentioned. Just cover your bases. As IO, that's that type of hero we always come back to, right? Like, we don't see it picked too much. You forget about it. It slips through. And then you are very quickly reminded why it should have always been on your ban list. You, you can really see that both teams are respecting one another. Some respect bans from Nigma as well. You see the Chen and the Timbersaw. On the other hand, as well, the Fury on the Wisp. Nothing really extraordinary in the first stage of the banning. Okay, uh, HR starts with the Pango. Does Nigma respond with the same thing they did last game? Like, if you are picking a Pango, you left both of those heroes, I guess HR has a plan, and that's probably what's uh, maybe worrying Nigma. They don't want to fall into a trap, so they are thinking this through. I, But I don't really see a reason not to get those two. They both... Beast and uh, yeah, so of course, I, I think these two are an amazing opening, especially versus Pango. I think these two heroes are strong, they are very flexible, not necessarily very flexible in the laning stage, but very flexible in a way that you can uh, draft around them easily. Yeah, you, you, they give you options because Beastmaster he takes so many boxes as an offlaner, brings you utility, brings you push, brings you uh, a solid disable in that roar. It's just a well-rounded, one of the, in my opinion, the best offlane hero at the moment. And then you have the Grimstroke as well with that soul bind. Not only do you have Phantom's Enchantress. Embrace and Outpush with uh, your stroke, you ha also have soul bind to come in handy versus the Pangolier that's been picked up. And here we have the basically the same opening as in the last <laughs> game, though. Yeah. Uh, I heard you say Beastmaster, best offlane right now. You would say he's better than a Centaur? Yeah. I think, really I think so. I, 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 I think he's on a completely different level than Centaur. I think every offlaner that has the capability to to get Helm of Dominator and Necros is a top tier offlaner right now. I think that's what you're looking for. Either that or something like a Fury on something that can go from one lane to another without necessarily Contact using the TP scroll. I guess that's more flexible than the Centaur as well, right? Because, you, you know, you can shove in the lanes, you can take the towers, uh, you obviously have a very <laughs> so, good right, stun, wait, but you wait, can also so, give a lot of vision. So literally the wait, same what? three heroes. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. have... Okay, now ban Meepo. What's the point? <laughs> ban Meepo. And then see what they've got. Let's see if they pick Dazzle. That, that's, that's the real test, because <laughs> I said uh, I didn't really like the Dazzle for Nigma unless there's a Meepo to, to just completely round that lineup up, right? Well, let's see if they go for the Dazzle again. I, I sincerely doubt they will. Uh, I feel like they will. I like the Dazzle. <laughs> I don't know, I like the Dazzle. Uh, I look at this point, like, about it. there's no point like even stripping, what are the alternatives right now? It's like, well, after what we've seen from Nigma at right. this tournament, so, there's no alternative. <laughs> so there's a chance, there's a chance. They pick Dazzle, they put it mid versus Kunkka, okay. and then they finish their dra draft up with... The Identical bands as well, <laughs> like and on one side, Ricky on the other. <laughs> Why are we, we even just, here? We just went 30 minutes back. Just, just re-loop, okay? We'll just, just cut off now, go back to the panel section before, and maybe you get a different game. No, sure, surely, the, as you said, the Meepo has got to be banned this time. There's no way that that gets through. It, it, HR is pretty much saying that was a fluke. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're, we're, we're going to pick the same thing again. And I really like it as well. It shows confidence. It shows that, okay, you may be one, but it was our mistake that we let the Meepo through. If we don't, you are going to lose this game. So now, Nigma took these three heroes, which are kind of the a really good opening. They work well with a lot of with a lot of things. They last game they thought it would work well with the Dazzle. Laning phase didn't go well, and now they're they're actually second guessing themselves. So HR, that's actually a big accomplishment as a let's say newly formed team that you are actually uh, Nigma is not confident against you. Well, that, it's it's a big sign if you're able to get in Kura's head as any team, right? Uh, they're they're gonna draft the same thing. If you give them an opportunity, they're gonna go dazzle Meepo straight up. Doesn't matter what these guys go. For. Maybe they're thinking of picking a Meepo now. 
That's what I was wondering. There right? you go. There's a dazzle. Oh. There we like go. This, this is like a game of poker right now. It's like there's no way you've got two kings. It's like, I have. Do you want to call me on this one? The, the thing is, if they went for a Meepo right now, that leaves uh, HR2 heroes to counter it with. And now they're kind of forced to ban it out. Let's see if HR... Is it are they, are they going to go? Is there potentially other cheese options for Nigma if you do ban that Meepo still? Though, Wait, what like was a the fourth pick for HR? Was it Bristle or no, Weaver? Bristle. Weaver. The Weaver, Weaver, the, yeah, Weaver. the final pick. I like the Weaver here. It's not a bad Weaver game. We, oh, really? We That's what it. they thought last yeah, time. Yeah, they, they <laughs> kind of had nice a It wasn't a bad Weaver game. Yeah, it's uh, hey. Only when the Meepo came out, it was good. You know what? With that sort of thinking, you should probably apply to be their coach because yeah, right yeah, now yeah, teams are firing their coaches left, right, and yeah, center. Yeah, de definitely, definitely. Uh, if HR loses this game, like Navi, they fire their coach, they call me. I'm going to do it. Hey, like, hey, bro, I would have still picked the Weaver, but definitely would have banned the Meepo. <laughs> Any other options in your mind, about, apart from the Weaver? I see no options. I only see Weaver. <laughs> I only see game four. I only see Weaver. That's the only possible. Nah, they ruined no, it. They don't want to ban the Meepo. No, it's true. They, they don't the want to ban off. the Meepo. That's why they uh, yeah. I mean, they can't ban anything. What were we talking about? They, I, they, yeah. Oh, yeah, but after the pick, right? Yeah. Was the argument like, but now you, you, you don't need to ban the Meepo anymore, right? You could just run an ET core in that lane. Yeah. Doesn't really have to be that way. First, ET needs to be at the core, right? And then you could put Dazzle versus that ET on the, on the mid lane and you could still pick the Meepo and put it on the safe lane, right? Versus wh whatever they pick. ET, after all, after, like later on in the game, can be a counter to the Meepo, definitely. Is a very strong counter. But one or two mistakes, a Meepo is taking your base. Mm. Just one or two mistakes, that's all that it takes. True. And do you feel like Dazzle shuts down ET on the lane if they do do that? Of course it does. Like, Dazzle would destroy ET on the lane. Uh, well, ET does have a lot of armor when he throws out his spirit and puts it back. So it kind of helps him. I, I don't feel like it would be a, like he would get destroyed. What? In the mid lane? ET versus Dazzle? Yeah, I think he's okay-ish. I mean, it can work. Sunny has been a really outstanding player. The tournament, I, I guess. I favor the Dazzle in that matchup. Yeah. I just feel like you get some armor from your spirit when he uses the poison touch. You get the movement speed. You can run away. And it's, it's mostly awesome. physical damage yeah, from yeah. the Dazzle. I, yeah, I can I can get behind that, I guess. I think Dazzle stomps most melee heroes. but Yeah, uh, yeah he does. Definitely. Yeah. It, that's definitely the case. I'm not arguing yeah. with you on that. Just saying that uh, he might work better than most of the other melees. Yeah. Definitely right. looks like at this rate it's going to be a melee hero facing up against that Dazzle anyway, right? You got the Pangolier, the Kunkka, and the ET already showing. Maybe they've got that that final pick reserved for the mid match of the Dazzle because right now this does look like a great Dazzle mid, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so exactly. far it does. I think uh, if you're not picking Meepo, you're putting Dazzle mid, and then you're picking your hard carry on that safe lane. Something that can deal with all these heroes. But I think you're not picking Meepo. Do you really want a Meepo in the safe lane? No. Why not? You you, really? you repeated all the picks and all the bans. <laughs> Do it for the memes. <laughs> Why not? Just because Hellraisers didn't stick to the script doesn't mean that Nigma won't, okay? Yeah, yeah, possibly. They do ban on the Naga, though, just getting rid of that hard carry late game potential of Hellraisers. If Hellraisers bans the Meepo, I'm going to be really disappointed, actually. I, I really mean, don't I want if you picked ET, that pretty much means that you're securing yourself versus that Meepo yeah. pick and that you believe in your draft. And because of that, I guess they won't, they won't ban Meepo, but uh, you never know, it's possible. They, they, still ha they still have a very capable position for to play that ET, and they have drafted Rogers e ET many times before. So, you know, it's not like some super crazy pick from them. You remember when we were talking about Dazzle and other heroes that work well with him, we called out Huskar, and that's what they ban out. I really like that because one cheese just worked versus them. They didn't get caught out with another immediately after. So oh. what rounds up this draft? I feel like, okay, but they, they really need a hero that's going to end the game, right? You need your win condition on both sides, pretty much. You need you need a, either a hard carry or, or some cheese pick again, like a Meepo. I think for Nigma, Meepo is also an option. ET, not only is good versus Meepo when he's played as a core, he's good later on because of the natural order. They go to Bristleback, all right, so All right, pretty much the same, thing. Yeah. same thing, 
Only E.T. instead of Weaver. Now, will Nigma do it? Because, all right, Nigma, I like a good tease as much as anyone, but now it's time to finish. Is it going to be the same thing? I would love to see it. Why not? I mean, it's like sticking your guns, right? I think there, I think there are better picks, though. Of course. I think when you see these three melee, four melee heroes on the side of HR, I think there are much, much better options Timber? for them Is to Timber go for. Is Timber in the pool? No, it's banned out. Okay, uh, Slark? Slark not is still in. Not great uh, against the Kunkka. No, it, it okay. would be all right. This was, but was this banned last? This was yes. banned yeah. last game. It was. It was what HR banned out last. Mm -hmm. It's still a game. morphling against the ET. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's morphling against ET. Natural order comes super in handy when you're playing versus a morphling because you just negate all of his natural armor. But... Uh, Overall, it looks like a game in which Morphling should be able to be the better win condition. And if this game goes late, in, in case that Morphling gets enough farm, I think he should be able to carry this quite easily. Yeah, that is the case. If it goes a bit later, I think Nigma got it. But to be honest, Kunkka, Fast Vessel, uh, some if this Bristleback has a good lane, and last time he did, I feel like HR can actually win this in like... 25 to 30 minutes, so if it goes over that and it's not like a huge advantage for HR, Nigma is going to take it, but I think I'm going to stick with HR. They just showed me that they play this laning well, really, really well, and I feel like they're going to do it again. All right. Well, either way, we're going to have a winner by the end of this. 2-2 two -two is the score. This is the final game, and Nigma, well, they put the faith in the hands of the water boy. Good movie, but let's see if it makes a good game five. Nomad Tigov, take it away. Thank you very much. Yes, let's get into the final game. It all comes down to one more match, and it is going to be Hellraisers versus Nigma. Game number five. Tigov, where, where, what's going to happen? I mean, nearly, uh, nearly the same drafts. One different here on each side. What's what? what? I, I just like the creativity of uh, not Nigma because, of course, their draft was pretty much the same thing. But uh, how Hellraisers they pick the ET, trying to cover themselves from the Meepo. They still pick the Bristle back. So I think, okay, maybe it wasn't the Weaver pick we needed. We need the ET. So I like how both teams, you know, they're confident in their own drafts. One team making a little bit of a change first, but yeah, we'll see. I think this Morphling, it's going to be such a decent game. I, of course, you've got the ET Aura, but it's still the fact that you have such a clear win condition and you have a Dazzle against most likely the Kunkin mid. So you're going to have a very strong lane from Weeha. Yeah, that one's looking a bit rough. And I feel like there's matchups all over the place which don't really work. And they've got nothing yeah. really to like s properly slam it. Also, the Pangolier, that's now forced into the, the off lane. And, and the into, yeah, Grimstroke Grim and Beastmaster. Didn't work last game as a four. Probably won't work this game as a three, but we'll see. I mean, maybe they can run it as a four. Um, I can't quite remember off the top of my head what, what other heroes they had. but I do like the idea, though, of the fact that Hellraids, they have this ability to play the lanes and then collapse on the map. The fact that you have... Beastmaster, Dazzle, like, it's not going to be that strong with this Morphling being that, sub, like, that extra factor, right? Like, it's, it's easy for an Anti-Mage, for example, to maybe make these aggressive moves, but the fact that you have this Morphling, he's a little bit slower in terms of impact on the map. Absolutely. Alrighty, let's get into this game. as We have a brief pause, but now ready to go. And uh, it's going to be Hellraisers versus Nigma in this final match here. I don't think many people would have expected this to go to all the way to Game 5, but Hellraisers yeah. has been putting on a show. you, you got to give it to Hellraisers. They... I think we most people could say the way that Nigma played, you have to rate Hellraiser as the underdog, but they've really pulled out some excellent games. And even in the games that they lost, other than that one we just watched, they had a fight in most of them. Just that last game, unfortunately, the Meepo just dismantling them. Yeah, he really did. He and really, really did. They still tried to play, though, which you always got to respect. You yep. know, they didn't just kind of go, well, they've got a Meepo. Let's just, uh, you know, try and farm and see what happens. No, they went for the everybody else. They were like, okay, well, we're just going to kill everyone who isn't Meepo. Not going to be a thing this game, though. But this Morphling does look scary. I mean, you've got no lockdown on the side of Hellraisers, right? Like, you've got a boat, torrent combo, a stomp, and... Again, it's kind of the theme Thunder, of the tournament. we said though. isn't going to be a thing. It's like, when you look at these drafts and you go, oh, team fight is such a big factor. These teams have been able to execute without such a clean, common, like, team fight lineup. And it's the fact that this line it is about the skirmish. You have the re the reset from the Elder Titan. You've got the big team fight from the Pangolier roll, the boat. Like, Hellraisers have the way to just own the map early on. The question is, does Nick, can Nigma either make the move first, play around this uh, Weeha Dazzle, and if Dazzle has a really solid lane, then you may be able to stunt this early aggression of Hellraisers, giving you enough time for this Morphling to be an absolute raid boss that he is destined to become in this game. 
Yeah, but I like this switch up though, putting Funnick in the middle lane versus a Wii instead of yep. using the pirate in the middle lane because that just doesn't sound like a good idea. But unfortunately, Swashbuckle unable to find the last hit on the rage creep there, which doesn't feel too great. But uh, still, with the creeps under tower, should be okay. not not a deny from Wii, and uh, he he's taunting. He's trying he's trying to get Funnick on tilt. Can you tilt the Moon Lord? Yeah, for sure. Probably. Yeah, 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 quite. Yeah, come on. <laughs> You've seen his tweets now. Come on. Yeah. I have. I have. One percent. One percent. Oh the, oh, the blog post? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in, case we, in case people are wondering, you know, what, what some of us have been going on about with the Moon Lord thing, I feel like it's quite a niche thing because it was entirely in Russian, but um, basically um, Gleb, a.k.a. Funnick, a.k.a. the Moon Lord, made a post which was crazy. It, it, it was crazy. Um, and even, I, people thought it was a mistranslation, but no, completely accurate translation just uh, didn't make any sense, in which he called himself the Moon Lord at one stage. Yeah. Meanwhile, just go Google it, lads. Yeah, give it a give it a give it a cheeky Google. Meanwhile, Roger getting right clicked up by GH, but uh, not getting too much done to this tanky tanky Elder Titan and Miracle being chased off the lane to start things off. Only two CS currently, so uh, they're really doing a good job on just zoning out Miracle completely, not giving him a shot, and coming and even trying to hit the creeps just yet. But we've seen this before where. Even if Miracle has a bad start, you're now actually giving Mind Control a, a, a decent start to the game. We haven't seen this in Primus all, say, all game. <laughs> definitely Mike, haven't seen yeah. Mind Control having a good game yet. No, so. Mind Control's had a rough time this entire series, and now he's look, the wave's pushing in. He's got pretty much three waves for free at this point in top lane, so he's going to have a pretty chill time, and that's kind of what Nygma want, right? They want to be able to play as four, and then play into the aggression of Hellraiser. Poshka, and the Poshka, get being down. That's going to be Miracle finding rotation. that kill. Looking in towards Roger as well. Roger in some trouble, but he turns around and thwacks Miracle at that one. But unfortunately, he should be going down himself. Can Nyx find the kill onto GH in response? The Quill's coming out, but he's got to stop. He, he knows that he will die if he dives any further than this. Nygma find themselves a nice couple of kills. But that stems from the idea that because Nygma sacrifice the Morphling early on for the first minute or two, you secure top lane, it means that this support rotation from Nygma isn't punished at all. If anything, they're, as you just saw, they're the ones punishing the over-aggression of Hellraiser. Tusk, Grimstroke, it's such a dangerous uh, dangerous support combo. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and so bottom lane kind of taking a uh, swing into, uh, into Nygma's favor. I mean, still kind of keeping the Morph pushed out. Oh god, two, two and one on this Morphling fast hits and denies. The, the good thing though for Harry's is you have Elder Titan into a tri lane. Of course, with the Spirit, the additional damage, he's always gonna, you know, pack a punch. That's not right. True, true. But so far this, this lane is heavily Harry's has favored. Meanwhile, up at top, we've had the Beastmaster casually farming away 16 and 6 compared to the Kunkers um, 8 and 1. So, oh, and last thing like that's not gonna help him much. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, he's going to get this one. Oh. There you go, both range creeps. Whoa, 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 he made it up, he made it up. Good job, Kasani. But it's nice to see Mind Control with, with a start for the game. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's doing stuff. Meanwhile, Kuro, he's doing stuff as well. Unfortunately, the stuff he is doing is dying. Maybe not ideal. Miracle way under the tower here. Able to find himself a creep or two. Nick's following it as well. And they just don't want him to get anything. They're like, oh, are you trying to get creeps, pesky Miracle? No, 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 sir. Chasing him down, chasing him away. And uh, Miracle going to be sent back once again. Got to get a strength morph coming. He's, he's morphing very late here, but with the ones helping him out a little bit. Meanwhile, no, he's gone. He's gone. GH trying to survive on the front lines here, but he's got the goo, they've got the impetus, they've got the quills, they've got the kill. GH gonna go down as well, and they're not done. Kuroki's gonna be the next target here, turns around with a stroke of fate, trying to land it onto two, but landed onto none. Has an ink swell, so that's gonna make him a less appealing target. But still, this is the end, I think, off this grim stroke as a stomp comes down onto his face. Miracle coming back into this one, though. Morphin that G trying to get some right off of Roger here, and is doing a decent amount of damage. But Mposhka comes forward as well, but they've got the shards to block off Roger's escape. GH on top of him as well. They've got the tag team. There's the damage. There's the kill. Now, they look back towards GH, though. Hellraiser's looking for aggression, but Mposhka's in trouble. Has to run away from Miracle here. He's got a lot of damage. Thankfully, there's creeps under the tower, though, so that's not going to be attacking Mposhka and allow him to turn around. Get a cheeky impetus to her off on the retreat, but I don't think that we've got... Well, we've got shards in two seconds. They might be tempted here. GH is not very healthy, though, and should give his life for this kill, but Mposhka will go down nonetheless. Snowball comes out. GH on the run. Nyx is trying to chase here. Nice blocks out from Miracle, and that's going to save the life off the Tusk. Wow. What a, what a, what a little adventure in the that, bottom that's lane. That's a little, little soiree. The, the beautiful thing, actually, about that aggression was that Hellraiser were able to keep the creeps like away from the uh, away from the tower, so they always had their own creeps being tanking the tower hits, meant oh that they could sustain God. that dive for so long. But this is kind of the same as the last game, but it's flipped, like Morphling, only 5 mm. CS having horrendous, horrendous I, time, um, but it's the fact that you have this Dazzle Beastmaster at least kind of saving the day for you. 
Unfortunately, Nigma, they always opt to sacrifice one one big core in their in their lineup, and this time it is Miracle. Like <laughs> this entire series, it's been Mind Control being the one that is kind of sub uh, substituted to that kind of support support ish role or enabling for the other cores. But we'll see how they can cope with Miracle having such a bad start to the game. Meanwhile, Roger blocked in once again. Beautiful shots out from GH. And look at the damage coming through on him. Thick and fast and heavy. And he's not out just yet. Gets a load of hits up before he dies. GH dying in response to this one. It looks like right clicks up there. But and they will be able to bring him down. Meanwhile, yep, yeah, Mr. Cluckles the Brave will be dropping as well. So uh, makes a favor a little bit however is favored, but. Meanwhile, Funic has to pop the ultimate here, but the, the poison touch is still on top of him. But he pops the uh, the Wii. Wii is it? Oh, he gets down the cliff, and uh, Funic having some trouble there. Really nice his, positioning uh, from Wii, huh? Just yeah, yeah. Knowing just... that he's gonna get knocked back, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, mind control. Oh, very deep and oh, toppling. Oh, actually. yeah, that was uh, that was under, under yeah. tier three somehow. All right, buddy. But well, very close to the necro. Well, the dazzle go for a necro as well, actually. So then you have the double necro strat to kind of. Ooh build up in the fact that you don't really have a morphling, so you go double necro level one, you have that push potential, a lot of pressure. Uh, maybe, but the wave clear for is, is a bit, is, is kind of decent. But if you kill the necros, it's 600 damage per oh, necro. Dearie oh dearie me, oh, miracle. miracle underestimating the damage off those quills and the impetus as the pressure comes in from around the side. And uh, a mistake nonetheless, but uh, still losing his life in this bottom yeah, lane these, as the action continues. These slight adjustments to Hellraiser's draft, even though it looks like it, the start of the draft looked like a replay. We were seeing how that one quick adaptation with the ETU instead of the Morphling, it, they're knowing how to execute. It's the beauty of the game, right? Like completely, uh, almost in identical draft. Well, well, Maposhka, Maposhka, oh yeah, she's going to lose her life, Snowball. Like and uh, Miracle's damage comes through. The key thing as well is Miracle is the one who's well, TP'd in. His kills, yeah. He's looking for Roger, and Roger might be oh, gotten here. Another, another stroke of fate off the mark. Roger still running himself away. Miracle trying to chase him down as well. Adapted Strike going to come in, but it looks like Roger will survive for now. Meanwhile, Nyx, well, they're looking at him, but Funnick comes rolling on through, and Roger does eventually tick away to the Poison Touch. Meanwhile, Nyx on the run, still trying to survive this one. Meanwhile, they're going to get Kuro in response, but Ooh. now the heavy hit has come through. Well, he's going to drop like a rock. Meanwhile, Miracle trying to make his way through the trees. Kasani and Funnick looking on from the sidelines here. They might come in to try and find him. He's trying to juke his way around a little bit, but they see him. Waveform over, and they don't really have the vision for him inside the trees here with the swashbuckle missing. I think Miracle should be okay. They're getting close to him. They're getting awfully close to him. More things coming it. out. Funnick might find him with the next swashbuckle. But waveform up in three. This is just a lot of wasted time. Kasani, he's not messing around. He's just pushing. It's it's very much whatever. I mean, they're taking the tower. Yeah. Miracle's getting nothing in these trees. He's literally a puddle in the woods. And now comes out, looking for something. Sunny going in the right direction, though, avoiding out those shards. And a slow from a post going to help out as well. But Snowball Fours from GH going to help him out and close the gap onto the Conqueror a bit. But they won't go for anything this time around. But we once again, TP himself in. Meanwhile, the Elder Titan is actually the only one in mid, soaking up all of that XP for himself right now. So he's going to be having a great time over there for Hellraisers. And that should mean the Nurse Blitter online a little bit sooner than perhaps it should be. Yeah, normally you see Enigma's rotations, they try and turn into fights and to capitalize on this pressure, but every time that they move bottom, it's kind of a small engagement, and then they kind of go, oh, I guess we've got to move back out on the map now. So Hellraiser is doing really uh, a really good job at bringing the, the right numbers at the right time, unlike Enigma. But meanwhile, we have mind control actually within the top four network for the first Whoa. time in five games. <laughs> My boy, he's feeling it right he's now. Let's go, Mind Control. Woo! He's got that Necro book. He's he's looking to have some uh, some impact taking away this tier two. But again, Hellraiser is no. quick to respond. No. Mind Control. Mind Control, no. Not like this. We just we just called it. Oh, dear. He's, he's still alive for the time being. Nah, mate. No, no, yeah. no. Cast a curse. You had a good start, but... We wrecked him there, didn't we? We, we yeah. yeah. We're the Powers. sixth man. Yeah, the cool. You want to try them out? No, that's too much responsibility. That is true. But we heading towards the middle lane. Looks like they are going for that double necro, as you mentioned just, before. So just look at this dispersion, though. They instantly go mid, kill off the core, and then they're back out on the map. It's like you use your, your TPs, get the kill, and don't waste any time. Just try and farm up. Don't allow this pressure to be punished. Yeah, and they're keeping that net worth advantage. Oh, Roger. Oh, he's found, he's found the juicy ones. The bristleback stacks. He's yeah. going to come over and, oh, many cools later. Yeah, this is something which we've seen uh, Liquid do before plenty of times. They love playing around with this Bristleback and just turn it up and annihilate oh, here, it. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah, we're in the money now. And I doubt that Nygma are really going to try. I mean, they probably know this is going on. You know, they're, they're, they're no strangers to Bristleback games, but 
they're not going to really try and uh, interrupt this because they've got no one who can take the stacks themselves. No, exactly that. It's hard to contest this. And also, it's in a position where you're still choked in between two tier one towers. So it's such a such a Hellraiser's dominated position right now. Mm -hmm. And look, meanwhile, Bristol Farm, the statue, and Chantra still pushing this bot lane, just, just loving life. This is a very good start from Hellraiser's. Yeah, yeah, they uh, are. They come out pretty dominant out of laning phase as we get past the first 10 minutes of the game. And it is a 4k gold advantage for Hellraisers. Might be able to, uh, you know, uh, put on some pressure and maybe try and choke Nygma out of this uh, this final game here. You have to ask yourself, event. with Nygma, where's their playmakers? You know, your Beastmaster, he, he moves to a lane, sets himself down, and then you have that raw. Same with, like, Tusk, Dazzle, Grim. That none of them want to make these big aggressive moves. They're very... They play as a unit, and outside of that unit, they're kind of just hit and creep. So it's sure. kind of concerning for Nygma that they are at quite a disadvantage until that 25-minute mark, I would say, when, when this Morphling can really pack a punch. And he is, you know, he's beginning the journey to recovery. Yeah, rehabilitation so from that horrendous laning phase. And the Kunkka buying the vessel, even when the Morphling has one item, he's already countered. He needs at least Manta or BKB. He certainly does. Meanwhile, Kunkka trying to play around here. Roger in a great position in the trees, but now with the TP is coming on over, feeling a, the urge to be a little bit more cautious about this. But they've got great vision down here. I mean, they've got a lane ward plonked forward. But look at top though, mind control this entire time. There's not a lot of tower pressure from Hellraisers. You don't really hit buildings that quickly. And with True. the Beastmaster, with the Necro, you're able to instantly disconnect this aggression just with the, the push on top lane. And now, <gasps> Nygma, they identify that someone's TP back to defend, unfortunately missing the shards, but if they caught that, it would have probably led into a kill. TR, I, I don't, well, you don't care. I, I care about this, and I think uh, right. I think the, the viewers care about this, but Dazzle, he's got the Aghanims queued up. We Let's might go. see it. Is it good? Probably. I'd like to say so, but I think you... It, it, okay, so basically... I want a singular pub with it, so safe to say it, it's, it's pretty meta. 100% win rate with Nomad, let's go. It does apply a right click to every spell you use, so I can see, of course, it being good, but the question is, you need that one extra item, that one damage item to enable it. Mm -hmm. For example, maybe a Desso, I think, is the most commonly Definitely. thought about, with right? Dazzle, so, yeah. So He's already it, got the uh, Blightstone as well, so. Yeah, for sure. Seems he, pretty likely. Meanwhile, Mind Control shoving his head forwards here. Might be attempting jump here, but GH is behind him, so the save could be available. Meanwhile, the Raw comes out onto Roger, but that's not going to disconnect the combo. Oh, Ooh, messed up by Kasani. A rare mistake from him so far in this series, but no one's coming in to help out Mind Control here. He's just going to lose his life all alone in the jungle. And normally we'd say, but maybe this death's in a position to have wasted their time, but it's right next to the tier one tower. <laughs> yeah. Converting it straight into an objective push. And, but Miracle, luckily, is pushing the bot lane, but no, that just wasn't that good from Nygma, and Hellraiser just showing that they clearly learned the style of Nygma. They are, it honestly looks, at some times of the game, it looks like Hellraiser is Nygma, honestly. The way that they move around the map, they're bringing cores, they're sacrificing farm on certain heroes just to ensure that they have numbers advantage. Like, these two teams, honestly, playing so I feel like Dota when they're ahead. Ooh. Earth Flirt coming on through. They might have found themselves a wee, but the Snowball comes through to save them from the Earth Flirt right now. Meanwhile, NK come, getting them both inside. A miraculous uh, shards there, along with the Soul Bomb, but it doesn't He's really matter. They're down to the low ground once again, but unfortunately, it gets followed down by Funic, and they will grab that one. Meanwhile, Miracle was able to take himself one tier one tower, whilst they lose another tier one uh, off on the side of Nick, but get themselves a kill onto the Dazzle now. Looks to put some pressure onto the tier two as well. My only concern is if Weehar does go for this Axe, he needs another 3,000 gold to be online to some degree. Yeah. So he's about 7 to 8k gold away from having potentially a timing. And then when you see Hellraiser going to Roshan, unlocking that with the fact that you have the goo layered into Roshan, it's a free. It's pretty much free at this point. And how can Nygma fight them right now? They don't have any way to approach a fight. Yeah, Stubble Diamond's been doing a hell of a lot of work, and none of them is Alien arriving as well. The anti-armor onto Roshan it, from Hellraiser. It, it melts. It, it. See you later, buddy. Aegis going into the hands or the claws or the paws of Bristleback. I don't, I don't know what porcupines have. Appendages. There we are. Nice middle ground. He's, yeah, yeah. I, I believe you. I trust you. The, the important thing to note, though, as they do Roshan, they have been able to push out top and bot lane. So even though Nygma are, are at disadvantage for the pressure, they are keeping the lanes pushed out, forcing Hellraiser into a single lane push, which potentially could be defended. True, true. And once again, you know, Miracle, slowly but surely, trickling his way up the net worth chart on that Morphling. And this puddle might one day become a pond, and that pond might become an entire ocean. 
if he can take over this game. I'd like to see the smaller step where the pond becomes a lake and then the lake becomes the ocean. Sure, but sure. <laughs> a, a larger body of water into a larger body of water. What the <laughs> point is there? Uh, Shibraw comes out from mind control, keeping himself alive a little bit longer, but unfortunately the Hawk just helps Dying get more damage again. out onto him. They've got the Spirit Vessel onto him. Duke's one way, but uh, they know he's there. The Stomp, got to put an end to mind control. Yeah, like Nygma are just trying to throw their bodies to alleviate the pressure, allow Miracle to try and get to an item. Like you can see, he has to go Manta to deal with this vessel, to deal with this aggression from Hellraisers, but he still doesn't really have a fight. Like Nygma, their cores, both Dazzle and, and Morphling, they're around about Radiant 8 to 9k gold away each attack. before they have any impact in a fight. And Hellraisers, they identify that. They clear out their own jungle, kill off Mind Control to split pusher, and then they push in two lanes. Meaning if they do any aggression on mid, it should convert into a top tower as well. But how the Hellraisers actually go high ground and end the game? Well, that's the real question. Like, that's the important thing. It's the fact that they have this ability to play aggressive. They're going to take these outer towers. They've got this double ward set up. If you look at the minimap, they're covering the entrances to both the jungle. So they're going to play off the pick off before they try and move into the high ground area. Yeah, and the split push being a super annoying tool for Nygma to keep these lanes pushed in, to try and cause some upsets. It's the most important thing that uh, Nygma can do right now. It's the fact that you are 6k down at 17 minutes. Your lineup isn't as aggressive as Hellraiser's. You can't fight. So the best thing to do is split push. Like you've seen Mind Control sit Radiant's top for pretty much now 17 attack. minutes of the game. He's always been here and that is his primary job. Even if it dies, I don't think it matters too much because now Radiant's at this point, it's so far away from his base that now there isn't much pressure after the pickoff. Oh, yeah. Same again with Morphling and bot lane. It's, there's no tier one to take. So it's going to take an extra 20, 25 seconds due to get the lane out and into an aggressive position. And I think, you um, can see the net worth. Look, it's now from six to 4K. The style of play, it's slowing down Hellraiser. It is. It is. Their, uh, their lack of push, their lack of ability to really kind of punish Nygma is, is starting to take effect. GH still with a double fairy fire. Sleep comes out. Kasani's here as well. He's going to have the X Master set up onto this Tusk. He can't get out the Snowball, but they're chaining pretty nicely. Snowball finally comes out, but it might be a little bit too late. The big punches are here from Roger. GH once again not finding the shards he needs and will give his life. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, Nygma feel brave enough to come forwards here, start pushing out some waves. Where are we with its agonims on the Dazzle? Two and a half components, I'm going to guess. What? No! Oh, he went for the green. He just baited me so hard! Wait, why? I thought we were friends. No. Oh. You're not friends, mate. He's going for the Greaves. He he realized that buying an Ags offsets him for another like seven to eight Curti gold. I do apologize, Nomad. Maybe after the series we can uh, solve that friendship. But no, the Greaves, you kind of need to buy it. I feel like if you have two cores going for greedy items, we saw we already try and buy an Agonyms and try and make it work. Reference the DK. It didn't work. So maybe a couple of flashbacks to that game and realizing he needs to kind of bridge the disadvantage that they have right now through an active item. Well, I accept your reasoning, but I'm not one bit happy about it. Meanwhile, Bristol, he's finished off a solar crest. That extra slow going to help out a lot. And uh, combine that up with a spirit vessel, and they've got a lot of anti-morphling to throw down. Morphling hates playing against minus armor, and hates playing against a vessel. So, really good itemization. But, again, the question is, Hellraisers, they need to, they need to get their lanes pushed out, and then they need to try and get go for a pickoff. Until that pickoff occurs, then they're going to feel quite lost on the map, and the game will slowly slip away in terms of Morphling just coming back. Like, or right now he's got the Manta. He's going towards the E-Blade. Yeah, so his Manta going to help out a lot versus that Spirit Vessel as mentioned. Um, Solar Crest as well, somewhat. I uh, I definitely like the way this game is heading for Nygma. I, I don't feel like, you know, it's a 5k gold advantage for Hellraiser, sure. They have an Aegis, sure. But we've kind of hit this brick wall now where they're like, uh, what, what do we do? But as well, Kasani going for the Orchid. So interesting. It's okay, but the fact that Man Morphling already has Manta. Yeah. And if they, if they can bait this, actually, throw the Spirit Vessel onto him, bait out the uh, exactly, Manta, yeah. and then plant him up afterwards. You're going to have to do a little bit mm. of baiting with this. And additionally, the Tusk with the Snowball save as well, then you might actually opt to try and Orchid him. It's There's a lot of questions here. I think you mm. can see how Hair <laughs> Rangers are, mm, <laughs> are, are identifying the fact that they want to try and fight and end the game within the next 10 minutes. That's yeah. why they're going for these types of items. Someone is taking our outpost, but we can't see them. I wonder what's going on here. But GH still in uh, a spot of bother, but at least he's going to make some space for his uh, Morphling to get out. 
and uh, that was the uh, the Orchid reveal as well. Bristol back to very deep top lane. Morphling already TPing in. You got the entire of Hellraiser now trying to collapse. Oh, Nicholas, sorry, trying to collapse on this. Yeah, and they're turning into him, stealing that goose, stealing that minus armor. Roar is out as well, and everyone on Nygma getting on top. And Nyx right now, Nyx, he's got Quills, he's got Crimson Guard, but unfortunately, it doesn't really matter. They're going to be able to bring down the Bristle. And that's your big tanky core gone in trades for GH. Down in the bottom lane, not a worthwhile trade at all for Hellraiser. This game seems to be um, just, as I mentioned before, it's a brick wall. They've, they've hit this kind of momentum, and then it's just stopped. They took Roshan, and they, they just don't know what to do anymore. So, a smoke up. They're not afraid to, to fight without Bristol. I'm okay with this. Yeah, we'll, we'll see now. It's probably just going to lead to a mind control kill that we've seen so many times before across this series, and I don't think it's going to change too much. Yep, there goes the X, and mind control's probably chuckling to himself. He's like, this is the best you can do. Cool. No worries. Yeah, he's, he's not that bothered, but uh, still does result in a kill. Maybe de-push top a little bit. Uh, TP over from the Pangalea, just um, keeping this shrine, this outpost, in the Hellraiser's favor. A couple of heroes making their way over once again, though. They're going to clear out Ooh, this information. Placing the ward first, not the sentry. That is torn tip number one. You place the sentry first to make sure there's not the ward to see that you have placed the ward there. Uncharacteristic mistake from Kuroki. I love that. Is it phrase, really was like, what, he just not care. He's like, well. he probably doesn't care. Yeah, high ground control. It's just whatever, right? You you want to own that area. You put the ward down. And I mean, I feel like these uh, high ground ward spots are just like so valuable that you know you, you know they're going to get ward if someone's in that area. But exactly. At the same time, like it's it's so so valuable. So I just wanted to use the the term uncharacteristic. It's such a great phrase. Sure, sure. Meanwhile, we've got a a punch and uh, this uh, tusk. By the way, is is carrying an imp claw. So his yeah. Big punches. He's going to be hitting pretty hard. Mike Tyson over here on the uh, on the tusk. And uh, Dazzle actually was going for a BKB as well after the Grieve. So oh, drifting even down. further away from your favorite item, Nomad. Yeah, I've, I've given up on Wii now. Yeah, it, friendship yeah. over. <laughs> Lost cause. Hellraiser is deciding to put some pressure onto this bottom lane. But again, three heroes from Nygma already Dying working the rest of the map. Trying to get it pushed out, trying to get pressure elsewhere. Is there a point where Hellraiser just go, hey, you know what, screw it, we're going to lose some tier 2s, maybe take some damage on tier 3s, but we need to get to the high ground now. Or is that not something they can give up? No, I think Hellraiser is about, they pressure this tier 2, maybe you get Minecraft pushing a little bit top, and then you want to have that sweeping motion. You want to keep forcing Nygma to have to react to your push, and then it prevents your farm. You see here, you've got Morphling and Dazzle in the same area. You are then preventing them from farming, and you can then farm up the entire map. You can see Hellraiser now drifting. The lead's not building, right? It's still 5k, but it's the fact that if you look at the minimap, look at how Top much lane. Hellraiser have presence. And Top lane, they've got vision on to mind control once again here as he's trying to clear out these trees for himself. The Yell Titan, Astral Spirit will not be able to find him though. But they clear out the bot lane, they now move top, they got the creep wave to play off, and they're probably gonna take this tier two again. They're setting themselves up for that next Roshan. Yep. And then they're gonna try and look for a pickoff. That's the key for eight tier. They have to go for a pickoff before moving to the high ground. Because so Nigma have built a very good brick wall in terms of the, just holding the high ground. Be it pushing out waves, be it that that E blade soon to be on Morphling. Do they need to get a pickoff before trying Rosh though? I think the other thing as well you can use is Roshan as like a uh, as a pull. You want to try and force mm. the fight there. So you can either A, go for a pickoff, or B, you just go straight to Roshan, bait the scan, Nigma try and maybe react to it, and then you put Nigma at a disadvantage uh, position where you can actually take an, a pretty good fight on the side of Hellraisers, which then converts into this push that we already mentioned. Meanwhile, Mind Control never actually left the trees, by the way. He's, yeah, uh, he's, he's putting vibing. a creep wave into it. He's messing with them, having a bit of fun. Oh, he's found. But he's pretty quick. He might be able to outrun this. Yeah. Unfortunately, Funnick is waiting, but he's going to just throw down the raw. Try and get himself out. There's a boat incoming. I imagine they've got the X. Wait, what? Oh, it was on cooldown. X was on cooldown. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. What earth did they use that on? Don't know. <laughs> Don't know, mate. I, we didn't see it. Yeah. I, but didn't have it, so that's unfortunate. Pretty Quite. cool. That's pretty cool from mind control, though. Quite. Like, yeah, he's just like, well, guess I'm. Oh. <laughs> like he. I didn't die. <laughs> this is a first. <laughs> But a great space created from him as well, you know, just ruining this top lane over and over. And you could see, um, there, and, and was, before he was doing that, they had actually gathered on the side of Hellraisers on the enemy side of the map down at bottom, which is exactly where Enigma was. So it's likely if they had moved, decided to move in there, then they would have found something. But because they just spotted this Beastmaster in the trees, putting the creeps away, being annoying, they had to come back, they had to deal with it. And because of that, nothing happens. And yeah. nothing happening is exactly what Enigma want right now. As GH shows himself briefly in the lane and then briefly runs to the trees again. 
Now, unfortunately, in these types of games where you're kind of trying to push out waves, Tusk isn't really that strong, and you can see him sitting bottom net worth. That's because Grimstroke has that inbuilt mechanism to push out lanes, and Tusk, unfortunately, Ooh. <laughs> level depending, he uh, really can't push out waves ooh. that well. But big Didn't jukes, though. Did they? Did they Ankle, see? I don't know. Ankles broken. Yeah, maybe. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't really know what that was. That was. Just praise GH in this moment. I think that's sure, a safe sure, day, yeah, right? Yeah, five. GH God. Yeah, yeah nice, God. One, nice one, nice one. Played him. Wreck. Um, yeah, so, I mean, still a gold advantage kept by Hellraisers. And, oh, Orb of Destruction on the Dazzle. But that's that's a, that's an Agonim's bait right there. <laughs> but the key thing is, though, even though they're still retaining the 5k, they're not building upgrades to lead. They're the ones who are looking like they're playing more of the map in terms of how, like, where they are. On the, but it's the fact that you have this continuous split push, both, like, literally everyone on Enigma's giving it a go. And that's yeah. why it's 5k and not 10 to 15k. But you see Hellraiser go straight into Roshan. Yeah, 5k isn't enough versus this Morphling lineup. And Morphling now second in net worth, not far off the bristle. He is going to be but a they huge say, issue. They have the Hawk in. Enigma can decide, are we going to contest? They have the tier 2 to TP, but I feel like it's way too late at this point. They've already committed to the split push, so they're giving away an Aegis. The thought process behind this though is Nigma. they don't really care about this Aegis because it's going to give Hellraiser that full sense of confidence. They're going to maybe go for a push, go towards the high ground, and like we said, if they get a little bit impatient, if they try and commit to high ground without a pick-off, that's when Nigma are going to be in a pretty good position to hold a good defense and then change the tempo of this game. So in that meanwhile, they did take a bottom tier two. Pushing is coming in at top as well. Elder Titan makes his way over just to uh, push back the Beastmaster once again, but Miracle is an absolute machine now with the Ethereal Blade finished up. He's got that, uh, ooh, they see GH here, but it's, it's nothing more than a look, nothing more than a glance. GH is okay for the time being. Yeah, you've got BKB on Brussels, BKB on Kunker. They're sure they're tanky and strong, but again, the, the age old question is how do they convert any of their aggression on the map into, into high ground? Nigma are just not putting themselves in a position where a pickoff leads to a any punishment. Like, look again. Look at Mind Control. Has actually spent like 27 minutes in this lane. He's had just like the most chill game ever. He's cut away his trees. His new home. He doesn't need to play with his team. He's just a split push machine. There is someone in his home right now, <laughs> trying to cut off and there's a, his there's escape a, a little bit. Pesky he's invader. Him. Saying invis, my control, he's pinging though, he realizes something's wrong. Another stomp comes out, but doesn't connect. But luckily, with the defusal, it'll make it nice and easy to control up mind control. Though once again, the slit does miss, and he's just running around with the X marks here, which he's also causes them. Yeah, I mean, he's still dead. But look, instantly, you've got mid being pushed out, bottom being caught by the, by the task. Like, these pickoffs aren't amounting to anything. They must be so frustrating for Hellraisers right now. It's so they obnoxious. can't actually play Dota. They just, they they're just they just forced to play the map, which is not what they want right now. They, they, every move that Hellraisers are making is towards this top plane. And sure, now they smoke up and try and move the across. The top lane's still pushing, though. They've got two waves, waves of creeps coming like in. They didn't actually de-push it first. Yeah, like the smoke is... Sure, it's aggressive, but mid and top is already pushed in. Bot's pushing in as well. Like, even if they get kills here, it's a... Nigma are honestly playing this map so well right now. Yeah, they, uh, they're definitely feeling in control. Oh. Gee, if, oh, that was a little bit closer than I gave him credit for, but the, the, all that anti-armor with the goo, with his um, soul crest. Yep, there we go, mate. Doing its uh, doing its business. But GH does live. Not a particularly high armor hero, yeah. Uh, level 15 on GH is just going to give them another hero that can do this as well, with that extra damage on the, uh, on the snowball and the shards combo to just take down creep wave after creep wave. Pretty darn frustrating to play into. I mean, we've got some tier three items dropping now for both the teams. Got Paladin Sword on the side of uh, Hellraisers, which I mean, it seems pretty good for the. Uh, they just about, they needed an item. Really, they, like realistically, Hellraisers are the team that wanted the Blightstone, right? Put it on your Bristleback. You get the AC on Bristleback. Then you have a way to maybe start hitting buildings. But unfortunately, not getting the roll of the dice and kind of locked out of the base and maybe waiting for. A, Maybe the next set of neutral items, or at least until they have the AC, I think. Because right now, again, like we already mentioned, it's, it's just brick wall is way too strong, way too well-constructed from Nigma. Yeah, nothing like a good well-constructed wall. Wow, look at all the CS in this game as well. That's a, that's a crazy amount of uh, creeps on everyone, because, I mean, that's all the split pushing, all the D pushing, everything that's going on. There's no, no fighting in this game. I'd love to see a heat map of mind control at the end of this game. I know. We, I don't think we have that technology available instantly, but I'll be loading up the. Yeah, if you want one, go make one. Draw, draw one yourself. Yeah. Goodness. A slight high ground attempt here from Hellraisers, but look at the top but, lane. Like, They're pushing in. Just keeping out. Oh, that was so oh, he's close. Good. He's good. 
Dude, you gotta believe in is the Bristol moon. Is Bristlebat now just by himself though? Uh, Do they even? The they don't have the outpost. Here. Okay, they're fine. They're fine. Okay. Going on top though, getting the Pangalier kill. Okay, that's 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 that's, that's not bad. Enigma feeling pretty good so far. Capturing the outpost so that they can have the uh, TP advantage. There we go. All right. So Hellraiser again. It boils down to the fact that Enigma are playing this map so well right now, drawing them from bot to top and then punishing whoever's lingering and. Unfortunately, their Phonic escapes, but they uh, then just walks into the Morphling. The E-Blade does so much damage there. Yeah, and uh, Miracle's continuing to playing around at top here, and Nickman are actually looking for something, someone. Have they found them, though? They look over, and the is going to be the target. The Snowball doesn't connect, but the Punch certainly will. That's a crit punch coming through with the Inkswell as well. The Poshka killed off. And it's the patience of Nigma playing the map like this. They get that pick off, and as soon as they get the pick off, they're able to move so freely, so aggressively across the map. And unfortunately, Enchantress just lingering in the neighborhood a little bit too long, boils down to another kill, most likely converting into a tier two tower. And it looks like Nigma, they're ready to fight now. They've got their BKB up on the Morphling, nearly the highest net worth here in the game. In fact, a couple of right clicks will, uh, a couple of last hits will bring him up there. Looking very, very strong for them right now. Meanwhile, Kuro is getting beaten down by Nyx here. And in comes a Shallow Grave coming out just in time from Weed to keep Kuro alive for the time being. Meanwhile, Funnick coming in around the back lines. But they've still managed to bring down Kuro. And Mind Control being locked down as well here. So oh, he has the gem as well. No. Ooh, Mind Control giving away a gem. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not great. This style of play is fine if you're able to set up. But unfortunately, Kuroki instantly getting like jumped due to his positioning. You have to use the Grave. Like, you were two to three seconds away from Raw. Like sure that this style of play, this aggression is good from Nigma, but then you, you you go a little bit too early. Four to five seconds difference could be the difference between them just wiping them in there. Meanwhile, a Tusk is uh, is being somewhat chased by Nyx down here in the bottom lane, but uh, he's got a Blink Dagger with the Snowball to get himself with the trees and away. Yeah, they did put the Pandan Sword on the Bristle in the end. Very nice item for him. Bit of extra damage and life quick steal. update on Weeha. He's now going for the Silver Edge, even further away from your Agnums. Well, screw him. Didn't like him anyway. <laughs> 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 it's okay. It's probably not a good pickup. Meanwhile, up at top, it isn't. <laughs> Miracle just waiting to see. Maybe he can jump himself onto a uh, onto a little Enchantress here, but she's out of there. And Conker also grabbed himself uh, uh, Shadow Blade, which will probably turn into a Silver Edge at some point as well. Great item against a lot of heroes, especially the Morphling. And uh, with the Dazzle in the game, it's going to be good to uh, throw on anybody, really. The fear is simply that you have on Nygma, you have this Beastmaster, of course, BKP piercing stun, Tusk as well, BKP piercing stun with the, the punch, and then Hellraisers, they don't. So this Morphling, he's been holding onto his BKP, and there's not really been a real fight yet for him, but I feel like it's going to be so easy for this Morphling to navigate around, around the fight with such soft stuns that they present on the lineup of Hellraisers. Like, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed that they kind of stopped at the Orchid on the Kunker. I feel like, you know, um, going towards a Hex on someone or going towards, you know, just something to keep on piling the pressure. Even, even like an Abyssal, if you could find it. But I mean, none of these guys really want to build that. But Bristol maybe... Bristol actually going towards that. He has the BKB, he has AC, nice. and now he's got the Basher. I yeah, believe I think Pangolier like... as well, but he's looking for a Link. Yeah, there we go. There's the Basher on route. And I think, yeah, the Abyssal Blade, that's kind of what Hellraiser are probably waiting for next. At least they need items to be able to play the next fight, be it a Basher on the Bristleback or maybe a basher on the Panglia as well, but it's just too easy right now for Nygma to, outside of that one sloppy mis like mistake in that tier two, they can continue just doing this default push out lanes, continue waiting, and when the uh, Miracle feels ready, they're just gonna go. Nice third person cam, looking very handsome there, GH. Can you give us a, oh, I was hoping he'd taunt. Maybe he'd <laughs> feel the double camera on him. Yeah, yeah gotta get that full value, but. Mind control relocating to the bot lane, Got a bit bored of top. Moving house. Yeah. Too many uh, too many trespassers up at top. GH trying to fulfill his role here as well, but unfortunately, what the, wait, where, what, where's he's Pango gone? The map. Pango has left the building. <laughs> okay, he's back. Yeah. Comes back in to kill off GH. So yeah, if in this top side of the map, there's actually like two locations where you can jump out and get stuck in. Uh, if you have the Woodland Striders, you can also just walk up, not the Woodland Striders, sorry. If you like phase and force boot, you can get up there too. I see. Phase boost, that's it. You know the tier 5 neutral item, sorry? I can't think of the force yeah, boost. Force boost yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I said phase boost, but yeah. You can force boot up there as well. And also <laughs> TP out outside of the map, fun fact for oh, you. Oh, neat. Very cool. Thank but you only game. in that top set, section of the map. Blink Dagnar completes on the Pangolier, giving him that extra bit of reach that he feels he needs. It's now Aghanim's Blink Diffusal on Funic, having a lot of damage to output in these fights. 
And again, this hasn't been as extreme as last game where the Pangolo just felt absolutely useless, and that's because he's gone for these right-click builds with the Diffusal. You know, the Swashbuckle is going to be very useful this game. Therefore, you're not just entirely relying on the Rolling Thunder to be a hero and therefore just gets countered out by the... Uh, the by important the thing, though, is... The Blink Dagger allows him to be more patient with the fight. He can observe, wait for the Soulbind to be wasted or a Roar to be wasted, and then he gets to connect. He can ult from afar, utilize that Blink to just get into the fight straight away. So it's a really good pickup. Still, he needs the Lincoln to simplify the game even further. Oh, Funic looking for something here. We'll actually find him on the back lines, but Poshko has already been taken out here. Looks like he might be having a first fight for a very long time. My control gonna be the target. Meanwhile, Soulbind comes out onto Raw, gonna come out onto both of them as well. Funic just getting beaten down. Next up again to the front lines of this one, but the BKP's pop from Miracle from Wii as they manage to take down Wii. Uh, Funic, now they look over towards Kuro, who's not lasting very long whatsoever. Meanwhile, though, Miracle's able to take down Roger on the back lines. The GH gets a spear thrown as well. They just turn around and annihilate back. the poor little Enchantress. Nyx realizing this fight is probably over and going for the team. TP away will be successful. Meanwhile, shards come oh, down, nice catching out Conker, but he's got the invis. He is gonna live. And well, that's a dieback on the Enchantress, which makes it very costly. And Hellraisers will lose this fight pretty dramatically. Yeah, they committed so hard, and even with the wasted Soulbind on Grimstroke, the Funic was able to navigate away from his Conker, keeping himself as active as possible. It just I don't know. Just can, can you call it wasted with the double uh, double raw? Sure, yeah, so to that part, yeah, that was pretty perfectly good. fine. Just initially it was underwhelming, right? But then sure. it kind of connected with the double rush. Sure, yeah, good correction there. The, the, just the key thing is, like, how are they, they don't really muster any team fight at this point, right? Like, they're built around this early aggression, this early tempo, but once you build into these longer, more drawn out fights, you rely on roll, you rely on boat, and then it's like, what else do you have? Your ET's trying to do a sleep setup, but like, they can't really do anything at this point. I think Nygma has played such a perfect, like, Map, macro play, gameplay, sorry, that it's too easy for them now. You just you just have no kill potential on this BKB Morphling. Yeah, they need to find a way to bait out this BKB. You know, they did it in uh, game number three, I believe it was, against the uh, Miracle ooh, PA. Yeah, they, yeah, they uh, did it exceptionally two, well, for sure. Like, yeah. The fact that they were able to kite it, but that was kind of a simpler game where you had Ghost Scepters and Disruptions against this PA. So it was easy for her, her to jump and then get punished. It's a little bit different here where you don't really have any inbuilt saves built into your team. So when Morphling jumps and BKBs, the fight just has to stay in that area. And hell is they can't really disengage that well. So they have to commit to the fight. As well in that last fight, we are in the positioning, able to grave the Beastmaster. It's this Dazzle as well, always in the back line, keeping people alive. Greaves, he's got the Hex as well, it's now level 18 as well, it's such a short cooldown Hex. Yeah, it's brutal. It, it, this is disgusting and uh, still not your Aghanims. No. Meanwhile, Kuro, gonna take back that outpost, which was uh, over sent from earlier on, as uh, Kunker trying to do his best mind control impression by pushing out that bottom lane there, turn to get a bit of split push going on. Pretty easy with the boots to travel on the X marks. Yeah, unfortunately, Hellraiser is now trapped in their base. They've got that one defensive ward that they just placed in the entry to their jungle, but that's about it. Miracle doesn't care about this. Yeah, you want to uh, you want to torrent me? You want to throw spells on me? Cool, happy to do so. Uh, Shadow Grave coming out, I guess. Sure, why not? Keep him safe. Uh, oh. Okay. That was a satanic use as well, I think I heard that. Meanwhile, Miracle being beaten down pretty hard here, but does pop that BKP and actually going up to the high ground. Clearly wanting to fight this one, but they're causing some havoc in the back lines as Kuro's already been dropped. Miracle now going to be the target for now. We help him out from the sidelines, but now that BKP's over. The Xbox is going to come out on Tim. Raw being thrown down on the sidelines, though. They're trying to bring down Miracle. Shadow Grave down on Tim once again. The Raw going to finish off Roger. Now they look over towards getting more. Nick's throwing out some sticky goo onto some heroes. Meanwhile, they're just going to actually go and heal up over by the creeps, and Miracle on tip-top condition once again. A buyback from Kuro. Interesting little engagement there, but they don't have the buyback on the Elder Titans, so now a bit of a numbers advantage for Nigma. They might have thrown away their Aegis somewhat. I can push up into high ground with no real contest. There's no boat, there's no Pangolero. It's pretty solid. As long as Miracle doesn't die in the same way that he just did, getting popped by the Quills. Yeah, he keeps popping this satanic in kind of interesting ways. I, I don't know, um, but whatever. Does manage to uh, get some high ground damage. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta make sure you got your hotkeys right. That's kind of not what you want to see from your ages. Let's be let's be a little bit blunt here. This was uh, sure. a very poor push from Nigma, playing off the uh, miracle and unfortunately uh, just getting instantly blown up. Phonic just running around, just trying to clear out his jungle. That's about it. Also amounting to, to nothing. 
Yeah, but Nigma, they might be looking for something now, but unfortunately their catch is pretty non-existent. Yeah, both teams rely on this kind of... on one hero, pretty much, and on Hellraiser, it's the Pangolier, and, and to some degree the Kunker, and then for Nigma, it's all about this uh, Grimstroke and Beastmaster. Sure. Let's look towards timings now, though, because we're about to come up on 25s for a lot of the heroes on the side of Hellraiser and for this Morphling as well. I imagine the Morphling goes for the uh, Adaptive Strike multi-shot, especially with the Grimstroke. That's pretty disgusting. Meanwhile, Hellraiser's... Uh, I don't know what talents the Kunk has at 25 anymore because he got changed recently. Yeah, he used to have a cleave talent, I know that much. He's got the ghost ship. Oh, he still does. Yeah, it's, it's still the same thing, right. but it's not the, the biggest spell, uh, the talent, sorry. For him, it's more... He's got the Blood Thorn now, he's trying to build for the Hex, and they are picking off GH. I think the main thing isn't really about the level at this point for Hellraiser, it's the items. That's the key thing. We want to see a Lincoln's, we want to see a Bash on Pangolier, we want to see a Hex on Kunker, we want to see an Abyssal Blade on, on Bristleback. So, they're, even though the game is looking pretty Nigma favored due to how they played the map, they're kind of now also in the same position for Hellraisers. They're now, okay, we can sit on our base. We don't really care too much. It's 41 Aww. minutes into the game. They can just sit back and also farm up the waves. Yeah. They don't have the ability to push that well, but the fact that Nigma are pushing all the waves in, Hellraisers will passively be able to you know, get to their items. Meanwhile, they found a leveler on, uh, on the side of Nigma. Okay, they can go high ground. They can start tickling some buildings. But the Witness, oh, the Witness Shaka onto the Morphling, very tanky now. Being full Agi Morph and still having 1500 HP, it's, uh, it's pretty disgusting. Sounds tasty. And also with that Illusionist Cape, just summoning those every now and again to push out waves for him. Yeah, the one, time, that you, yeah, the one time you get a good bait from the Cape, I've, you've seen it so many times that you, you pair the Cape next to a hero, the smoke breaks, you think the real one's Illusion, and suddenly you've now wasted way too many spells. Oh, this is good though, Prince's Knife on Funnick. That'll be good, but the DD keep top, though, this is going to be a pretty good play to make off he this. Didn't keep the item. Hmm. Morphling picking up the DD. I'm going to see them probably look to make a, maybe a smoke play here. Or just a farm. No, I would prefer to see them be a little bit aggressive. I guess they don't want to... The, the, the theme of the entire series has been, like, little risk. Don't want to try and throw away their lead, so... Yeah, I definitely feel like Nigma's taken this game much more cautiously. Yep. Every other game, they were just kind of flying into the side of Hellraiser every given opportunity, but now they're like, hey, you know what? The series is at stake. We want to win. Let's go. Morphling's actually going for the Silver Edge as well, identifying the fact that they need to eat through some of these tankier heroes. Quite a nice little pickup. Yeah, and they are going back for this one, though, so. Oh, that smoke one smoke. could be tricky. BKB actually popped from Roger, but he's punched up into the end. They're turning around on the mic control. Look at the damage. They ripped through him in seconds. Roger does tie in response as Miracle comes in, and he is dishing out a decent amount himself, but having used his BKB early could set him up into an awkward position, but he's going down onto the low ground, looking for Funny, but Funny, he's got to connect with the enchantress. Meanwhile, look at Nyx tearing through Kuroki, doing so much damage, and looking forward to more here. Turns around a Miracle. It's a big, beefy fight right now. Miracle is not winning that badly. Meanwhile, GH trying to roll in on the sidelines here, trying to get something done and try and buy space for his teammates to get out, but that's not going to happen. GH. He's gonna lose his life in the end as the Shadow Grave. Not gonna keep him alive, but they turn it around. The Roar is out onto Nyx. Is anybody gonna help him here? He's all by himself. He's all alone. Having am doing nothing as they run him through. Down goes Nyx in response. He does have a buyback, but the Conquer does not. The Elder Titan does not. He needs 30 seconds until we get the Elder Titan there. Ooh, Nigma. They still do manage to make it happen. And they're now poking Funnick. Nice dodge of the swashbuckle. I don't know if it's actually going to hit him there, but yeah, instantly still. Morphling runs towards mid, tries to grab the wave, trying to force out these buybacks. Again, the theme, it's the fact that you take these fights, it didn't look that good for Nigma at the start, but you utilize the buyback, the bristleback overextends, the silver edge on the Morphling, suddenly this bristleback by himself will melt. And we just plonked himself in mid. Got that necro book. And that's the other thing as well. This entire fight, you're, you're trying to commit so heavily onto a Morphling with limited lockdown, and then you have this Dazzle as well. Got the defensive BKB, pumping out Graves, pumping out consistent heals, the control of the Hex. It's, it's so hard for Hellraiser to take these fights. They've done so well to get to a game five, to take it all the way to 40 minutes in this game, but their drafts let them down at this point. They, they had such an early timing, and I feel like, I really feel like this Kunker needed to go for the Cleave Talent, get a Rapier, some Hallelujah play like that, because losing like this does not feel good, but at the same time, you know, they still have a chance. Let's not call it yet, but you, you, it's you're really potentially two one. racks down. Your creeps coming in, like oh, cool, cute disarm, instant manta. But they, like Hellraiser know that if they buy back here, Nigma just reset, open up, open up the map, and then they're going to go for more pick offs. But now you're two racks down. It's going to be so easy for Nigma, I feel, just to take it, take the uh, end of this game. Yeah, and Miracle taking the risk, selling out his buyback 
for the uh, Silver Edge. But if we definitely look, paying oh off as yeah. they were able to take that fight and he uh, regained the buyback gold now. Yeah, if we look at Hellraisers and how they can maybe get back into this game, it's going to be either this Roshan fight. Smoke for Rosh go now. Exactly. Yeah. Or it will be playing off the aggression that Nigma does have. Sometimes they do have My one core by themselves. Roshan is melting. melting. Yeah. They've got no chance of getting over here. This is going to be a Roshan going down. For Wait a minute. Look how stacked it is. He's got Nagonims. Who's taking the eggs? Uh, mind control. Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no. Oh, oh, who? Oh, it's great. Grab, grab the egg. Oh, oh morphling. morphling. Interesting. Do you just want to stack up Miracle a little bit more? Sure, why not? Yeah, why not? He's already jacked. One more rep won't harm anyone. But now Hellraiser, they're in the... Again, the classic. You, trying you to take hold ages, this high ground. Weir's a great target. Can they bring him down in time, though? Abyssal comes down on him, trying to bring down Weir. They do get the kill, but he buys back immediately. They want to take this one. They see the end of the game is inside, but Kuro's going to lose his life as well. No buyback on him. Miracle just trying to fight up into Roger, but Roger is in. Biz can't be killed. Nyx, meanwhile, going to get Silver Edge out on him. The Roar coming through as well. Nyx cannot die here. Does not have buyback as they chase him around the fight, but they're looking for a different target instead. Miracle going to find Roger. Stay on top off the other side. And meanwhile, punch out onto Nyx. Nyx losing his life, getting low, getting low fast, but he is dead. Does have he buyback. Coming back into it. We are Roger trying to run away on the sidelines with the cover of the Glimmer Cape. Will be able to do so. Miracle still chasing. No, he's looking for more. Roger dies in the back lines and now the Hex immediately onto Nyx. But he looks to hold Kalasani and second side. going to pop the BKB for the punches out. Nyx, not again. It's the exact same way he died the first time, but it looks like there's not much going to help him out here. We with the cheese keeping himself alive and Nyx is going to die for a second time over. 135 seconds to end this game and they're just going to call it there. The GGs come out and Nigma. They prove that there is a reason they call EU the strongest region and they will take game number five and with it, the series. Nigma are victorious. Hellraisers, they had a hell of a run.